Protected by endless deserts and untouched landscapes, an exotic and fascinating civilization has managed to survive right up to the present day. Here in Central Asia is the land of the nomads, Mongolia. Once a legendary and feared realm, yet one that is full of natural beauty. Today's capital of Ulaanbaatar, or Red Corner, was some centuries ago nothing more than a small nomad settlement. Today, around a million people live here, one third of the country's population. Past heroes, General Sukhbata and Genghis Khan are highly revered. The name Genghis Khan is synonymous with Mongolia. Under the leadership of this legendary monarch, the Mongols established the largest empire in history. A realm that extended across large areas of Asia, possessed more than 100 million subjects and created a new high season of culture. The Bodkar Museum serves as a reminder of the country's religious identity and features the world of Mongolian Buddhism, including its architecture. The ancient religious belief of the former inhabitants of the steppes was Tengrism, a form of shamanism. In the 16th century, long after Genghis Khan, the Tibetan form of Buddhism became the country's most important religious doctrine. Due to its numerous exhibits, which span several centuries, the Bod Khan Museum provides a good insight into the religious life of the Mongols. It's not only due to its most important museums, such as the Zanbazar Museum, that Ulaanbaatar enjoys an exceptional position within Mongolia. In stark contrast to the steppes, the city represents a new and modern way of life. Ulaanbaatar was founded in 1639. A five-year-old boy was acclaimed as being the enlightened one during a meeting of noblemen. The nomad settlement that contained the monastery of the enlightened one was named Gagin and was given the honorary name of Ergu, meaning palace yurt. During the course of history, the settlement that was gradually growing into a city changed its name several times until in 1924 it was named Ulaanbaatar. One of the capital's most interesting sites is the Central Museum that in addition to an ethnic section also features a large area devoted to paleontology. A large hall features numerous impressive dinosaur skeletons that originated in the Gobi Desert and are in excellent condition. Fortunately, the Monastery Museum of Shoishin Laminhid had also survived. During communist rule, many of the country's sanctuaries were destroyed. With the foundation of the Mongolian People's Republic in 1924, Lamaism was condemned by the communist regime as an obsolete doctrine. The Mongolian Revolutionary Party wanted to establish Marxist-Leninism as the country's new spiritual and cultural doctrine. So Buddhism was rejected by the communists. The downfall of communism in Eastern Europe gave rise to increasing democracy in Mongolia, in which religious life played a large part.
By the Tuol River, just outside the city's gates, it's possible to witness shaman ceremonies, during which age-old traditions are experiencing a new renaissance. Shamanism is playing an increasingly significant role, particularly in the rural regions, which, in effect, are the most important areas of the country. This metropolis, that is often referred to as the coldest capital in the world, also contains much culture. The Moonstone Theatre regularly features performances of various ethnic dances. The Zam dances are unique cult mystery dances. Along with Buddhism, the Zam dances came to Mongolia from Tibet and now play an important role in the Mongolian culture. At first, these religious dances were performed only in certain monasteries during the New Moon Festival. But since the 19th century, they have become more widespread. The Mongols gradually developed their own dance form that is characterized by the colorful masks of numerous Buddhist deities and mythological creatures. Nadam, Mongolia's national festival, takes place annually between the 11th and 13th of July. The roots of the Nadam Games lie in the Kurultai clan meetings that were one of the cultural highlights of the Middle Ages. The word Kurultai was the title of the important meetings of the tribal chiefs, during which campaigns were planned and military leaders elected. During a Kuraltai in 1206, the most famous sovereign of the country, Genghis Khan, was elected as Great Khan of all Mongols. Although the Nadam festival is mainly a sports event, traditional music and dance is also performed, during which traditional throat chanting and the horse-headed fiddle are also featured. The Nadam festival is mostly a contest of three traditional Mongolian sports. Archery, horse racing and wrestling that is particularly popular. Wrestling is only for men. The sport events take place during the first two days of the festival. The third day of the festival is devoted to public entertainment. The festival features the rich cultural inheritance of the fascinating nomads. The largest Nadam festival traditionally takes place in Ulaanbaatar. Yet in many other towns and remote rural areas, the custom of the three male games is still quite common. About an hour from Ulaanbaatar in Tov province is the calm and tranquil Manzushia, a charming area. It's totally different to the densely populated Mongolian metropolis. In addition to several tent-like huts or gurs, it's mainly the centuries-old scattered remains from the high season of Buddhism that captures the attention here.
an historic place with traces of the Turkish Empire and Genghis Khan is said to have had his headquarters here. Manzushia became famous due to the remains of a once important monastery complex that are to be found in the Bogdo Khan National Park. The monastery was founded in 1733. The Manzushia Monastery once contained 20 temples. But in 1932, the splendid Buddhist buildings were razed to the ground by the Mongolian communists. Apart from the central sanctuary that has only recently been restored, only ruins remain of the other temples. The special charm of the monastery complex of Manzushia is not only due to its architectural remains, but also its picturesque location above a wooded valley amid wonderful nature. The 47,000 hectare Konyo Khan Nature Reserve combines historic remains with the untouched beauty of the Mongolian wilderness. During the late 17th and 18th centuries, this area was politically and spiritually dominated by Zanbazar, one of the region's most important leaders of Lamaism. According to legend, when Zanbazar was a young boy, several miraculous and remarkable occurrences took place. Indeed, at the age of five, he was called Ondur Gagin, the Great Enlightened One. After some years, the boy was sent to Lhasa, During his stay in Tibet, Zan Bazaar was given a special education. He was taught by none other than the Dalai Lama, as well as the Panchen Lama. After his return to Mongolia, the Great Enlightened One became famous as a remarkable Buddhist teacher and sculptor, and was said to possess magical powers. Subsequently, more and more schools and monasteries became established throughout the country, such as here in the Konyukan Nature Reserve. Today, only a few ruins remain of the ancient monastery. Yet even now, the sanctuary has an extraordinary atmosphere. The surrounding landscape enchants with its exotic splendor. Since 1997, the Konyokan Nature Reserve has been protected. It's been part of the province of Bulgan, one of 21 Mongolian provinces known as IMAX. The natural landscape here is beautiful, which is hardly surprising, as Mongolia is the most sparsely settled country in the world. To highlight the point, there are only 1.27 inhabitants per square kilometer in the entire province of Bulgan Aymar. Mm. 
Those who don't live in the multi-storied buildings of the Mongolian capital of Ulaanbaatar continue to live in traditional yurts. Tourists are accommodated in Gurs, such as here in Bayan Gobi camp in the province of Uwahangai. Around the camp area of Bayan Gobi are large plains of sand dunes that every now and then contain hills with bushes and rocks. The camp is an ideal starting point for various excursions. From here, the natural beauty of the surroundings and the omnipresent wilderness of the province of Uwahangai can be explored. At the foot of the Changai Mountains are the remains of the former Mongolian capital of Kakorin and the neighboring monastery of Erdenezu. During the 13th century, this was the center of power for the most famous and most important leader of the Mongols, Genghis Khan. Kakorin became the official capital of Mongolia while under the leadership of Ugarai Khan, son and successor of Genghis Khan. Under his rule, it grew into a town and from 1235 it was protected by a large fortification. The new sovereign, Ugarai Khan, gave the country a well-organized and stable political system. He introduced state chancelleries and had a large Khan palace built in Kakorin. The buildings have since been restored and now demonstrate the pride and former power of the Mongolian people. The Buddhist religion is omnipresent in Kakorin. The Erdenizu monastery was built at the end of the 16th century. Following decades of suppression and persecution by the communist regime, the people here have rediscovered their cultural roots. The monastery is far smaller than it was originally. A gear contains information for visitors about the historic monastery complex that during its high season contained more than 60 temples. Today, a growing number of Mongolian monks return to Kakarin. The Erdenezu monastery is experiencing a new renaissance. For several years, the former capital of Genghis Khan was in the spotlight of archaeological interest, as shown by the many excavation sites here. It's not known if this area was the location of the former Khan Palace. But Kakarin was not the first urban center in the historically important Orkhon Valley. In the 9th century, the fortified town of Karbalgis, capital of the Ugarin, played a central role in this region.
The realm of the Ugarin, with Carbalgus in its center, extended across the entire region between Manchuria, the Caspian Sea, and Lake Baikal. In view of the remote landscape and absence of human habitation, it's hard to imagine that the old capital of the Ugarin once had a population of a hundred thousand. The Ugarin monarchs focused mainly on the development of trade and the spreading of religion. Their armies took second place, a fact that soon caused the downfall and collapse of their huge empire. For thousands of years, the Yak has played a vital role in the lives of the inhabitants of Mongolia's high plains. Today, most of the herds have been domesticated. The domestication of the Yak has been well documented in ancient Chinese scriptures. For the inhabitants of the highlands, the Yak is all important. Today, the nomads use modern means of transport, such as mountain bikes, in addition to age-old traditional methods. The herdsmen who keep the yaks use their horses to herd the cattle to remote pastures, just as did their ancestors. In Mongolia, around half a million yaks have been domesticated. They supply the people with meat, milk and wool. Compared to normal cattle and water buffalo, the yak provides about 400 liters less milk per year. Yet the fat content of its milk is far higher. The hard life of the nomads is often full of privation that can often be seen in their faces. Yet the people here appear to be content with their modest way of life. They enjoy the isolation and freedom of their daily life. They live at one with nature, amid the endless spaces of the Mongolian steppes. Almost 300 kilometers west of Ulaanbaatar is another cultural treasure, the Shankid Monastery. Shankid and Erdenezu are the only Buddhist sanctuaries in this region that survived the communist wave of destruction that took place in 1937 although here also some buildings have been destroyed. The many artistic details on these well-preserved temple buildings and sanctuaries underline the former importance and splendor of this temple complex. Up to 1,500 monks were once accommodated in Shankid. For many years, the monastery lay empty. But life is slowly returning to the monastery. And Buddhism has outlived communism. Entry to the main temple, that today again features seven Kala Chakra Mandalas, is a daily ritual of monastic life. The community is small and reconstruction has only just begun. But perhaps the monks of Shankid will manage in the not too distant future to bring the monastery back to its former glory.
numerous sacred treasures that lay hidden in a cave for many years during Mongolia's communist era have been returned to the temple. The monks pray for a revival of Buddhist values and traditional religious belief. In picturesque contrast to the narrow confines and darkness of the interior of the monastery complex is the splendid scenery of Okone Kunde Valley, a landscape shaped for thousands of years by the Orkon River. The river has its spring in the Kangai Mountains and finally flows into the Tuol River. The Orkon Valley has many features. Due to its favorable microclimate, the ancient pasture land here is ideal. The Orkon Valley has been inhabited for thousands of years. In many places, there are still traces of the oldest inhabitants of Ukonkundi. Archaeologists have discovered many ancient rock paintings. Mostly images of animals carved into the rock, and sometimes also simply carved human forms. On the banks of the Orkon River, unspoiled nature features many magnificent impressions. The wilderness of Mongolia is truly enchanting. Every now and then, there are also small settlements of nomads close to the river. Their herds of cattle and sheep have the perfect pasture in this fertile valley. The seemingly endless beauty of the landscape is breathtaking. And the special tranquility of this land, far from civilization, is quite awe-inspiring. Some sections of the Orkhon River are truly idyllic. A rare feature for a country that is dominated by sparse and rugged landscapes. Close to the river's spring, at the beginning of the valley, the small creek plunges down into a pool and then reappears in a deeper valley below. Surrounded by high cliffs on the southern side of Tukun Mountain, the monastery complex of Tukunhid rises majestically above the landscape. The foundation of this sanctuary was closely connected to religious leader Zambazar. During his early childhood in 1648, Zambazar established a close relationship with this place whose unique location impressed him deeply. Only three years after the discovery of the Great Enlightened One, a stone building was built on the southern slopes of the mountain. It was devoted to meditation. As in all Buddhist monasteries, the new day is welcomed. Young monks blow their conch shells and turn towards all four points of the compass. For many years, only a simple sanctuary stood here. 
The active life of the monastery began 50 years after Zambazar's death in 1773. Today, this remote monastery community has no lack of young monks. The monastery's temples have been restored and today shine out again in their former splendor. They give an impressive insight into the world of Mongolian Lamaism. Striking, colorful patterns and illustrations of various deities adorn the buildings in which three times a day the monks meet. But it is not only religious rituals that are featured here. Tukun Mountain has magnificent views across the surrounding landscape. It is believed that Zambazar retreated for meditation in a rock cave above the monastery and that he spent some years there. Today, Mongolian pilgrims bring sacrifices here. For the monks who live here, the journey to the top of Tukun does not pose a problem. On the summit is a shaman stone pile known as an uvo. The monks walk around it several times. But it's not only the uvo that is worshipped by monks and pilgrims. Sacred Tara trees are decorated with prayer banners and sacrificial offerings. An ancient belief in natural spirits, in the hope of favor and assistance. In the direction of the Gobi Desert, we reach an historic landmark. The old and mostly ruined monastery complex of Onginhid that was also a victim of the destructive powers of communism. The former size and dignified beauty of this once important sanctuary can today only be estimated. Only a few walls have survived of the once majestic temples. At the end of the 17th century, Mongolia fell under the rule of the Chinese Qing Dynasty. Until 1911, it was part of the Chinese Empire. After the collapse of Manchurian rule, an autonomous government came to power. At the beginning of the 1920s, the country resounded to bloody hostilities until in 1924, the Mongolian People's Republic was proclaimed and that was characterized by Marxist-Leninism. It was not without severe consequences for the Mongolian people. Stalinist rule between 1937 and 1938 devastated the country's monasteries and around 18,000 Buddhist monks were killed with countless sanctuaries destroyed. Luckily, socialist rule ended in 1990 and today more and more monks are breathing new life into the centuries-old monasteries. But many of the country's valuable cultural treasures have been lost forever. The Onginhid Monastery will perhaps never return to its former splendor 
although here a new beginning is visible. Until some years ago, the camel train was the only means of transport in Mongolia able to transport goods across the hostile Gobi Desert. There are no permanent settlements here. The area is too hostile, the climate too extreme. Yet, it is a magical region. The Gobi Steppe Desert not only covers large parts of Central Asia, it is also the fifth largest desert in the world, in which many an historical secret lies hidden. Petrified dinosaur eggs are only one example of the many finds that have been made here. Several dinosaur skeletons have also been discovered. Millions of years ago, during the Cretaceous period, this was the home of the largest land-living creatures on Earth. Since the first sensational discoveries of paleontologists at the beginning of the 20th century, Mongolia has been known as the country with the finest dinosaur excavation sites in the world. There may be many more as yet undiscovered skeletons of those huge, impressive creatures hidden in the sandstone mountains. Numerous discoveries from the Mongolian steppes are now exhibited in museums throughout the world, firing the imagination of all those who see them. From the paleontological excavation sites within the rocks, the view features another natural landmark of the Gobi Desert. The mighty sand dunes of Kongarin Els. Here, the landscape changes dramatically. Green meadows are transformed into majestic several hundred meter high sand dunes. The Kongorin Els is one of the most photographed locations of the Mongolian section of the Gobi Desert. The name means singing dunes due to the wind that makes the sand sing. A remote yurts and traces of camels in the sand indicate that the dunes of Kongorin Els are inhabited, if only temporarily. The contrast between the meadows by the nearby river and the kilometers long and up to 200 meter high sand dunes could not be any stronger. A fact that adds a special charm to this region. Within the vast expanse of the Gobi Desert, there are also a number of nomads who camp here with their horses. Traditional gurs are common all over Mongolia. The gur is a tent-like construction with a wooden framework covered with wool felt. The hospitality of the people is understandable as life in the remoteness of the desert is dominated by loneliness. The yurt serves the Mongolian nomads as bedroom, living room and kitchen. The traditional arrangement of the furniture is always the same. Since the era of Genghis Khan, nothing has changed of the basic design. Mongolian cuisine, and especially the cuisine of the nomads, is very rich. It helps them to endure the harsh climate and its extreme winters.
Although in some ways the modern way of life has reached this remote area, it's also obvious how the people here cling to their centuries-old traditions and culture. The inhabitants of the Gobi Desert are proud of their age-old traditions. Almost one-third of Mongolians continue to live as nomads, something that will most likely continue for the foreseeable future. A more populated area is the Lamagaya Canyon of Yolinan that is one of the most famous natural wonders in Mongolia. The name of this fascinating canyon stems from the existence of Lamagayas that are ideally suited to this region. Yolan Am Canyon is part of the Gurvan Saikanul Mountains, whose highest peak is 2,800 meters and towers over the surrounding Gobi Desert. Over the course of time, water from the ice fields of the mountains has cut a deep and partly narrow canyon into the rock. Water constantly flows through the Lamagaya Canyon that is full of mystique. The mystical atmosphere is also highlighted by many visible signs of decay. The deeper that one penetrates into the canyon, the greater the chance of encountering the eponym of the Yolanam, the Lamagaya, or bearded vulture, that builds its nest in the steep rock walls. After the silence of desolate nature, the small town of Daranzadgat in the south of Mongolia appears like a strange foreign body. The somewhat rugged charm of this town and its population of 17,000 plays an important role in the local tourist industry. For many visitors to this region, Daranzadad is the starting point for excursions into the Gobi Gurvansaikan National Park that is situated 30 kilometers from here. In addition to its restaurants, banks and shops, the town's officials also offer visitors culture in the way of a theater. Very popular with the inhabitants of Daranzadad is a place where a traditional Mongolian sport is performed. This large wrestling stadium accommodates several thousand onlookers. Here, the traditional wrestling games of the Nadam festival also take place. The original landscape also influences the lives of the inhabitants of the Altai high mountains. Most of the people of this area live as modest herdsmen. A satellite antenna means for many the only communication with the outside world. Larger settlements don't exist here. The population here is less than one inhabitant per square kilometer. Early in the morning, the Mongolian herdsmen awake. In the kitchen, preparation of a rich breakfast has already begun. The dogs are still sleeping in the morning sun, and a new working day is about to start, even for the youngest members of the family.
After sunrise, the sparse beauty of the landscape becomes visible with its impressive variety of magnificent rivers, steppes and mountain summits. The Gobi Altai is in stark contrast to the Kazakh, Chinese and Russian regions of the mountains on Mongolian territory. The local flora of the Altai surprises by way of its diverse variety. The reason for this lies in the varied quantities of rainfall at different altitudes. For herdsmen and cattle breeders, the distant steppes provide the perfect pasture for their animals that comprise horses, sheep, goats and yak. The hospitable owners of this gear belong to the ethnic group of the Kazakhs that are related to the Turks. With about 100,000 inhabitants, the Kazakhs are the largest ethnic minority of present-day Mongolia. The interior of the comfortable yurt has all the characteristics of a gear, such as an iron oven and chimney. Following the rich meal and typical drink of the people of the steppes, fermented mare milk, most of the family members return to their work. The mares must be milked every two hours. The responsibility of the women. Everything here travels a natural path and maybe it is this daily routine that makes the life of the Mongolian nomads so timeless and self-contained. The inhabitants of the steppes have adapted to the natural conditions of the landscape. Centuries-old traditions that have preserved a way of life that has become rare in modern times. Here, people continue to live in harmony with nature. While the herds pass peacefully by the girs, two riders leave the camp to go on a special, traditional hunt. The inhabitants of the Mongolian section of the Altai are eagle hunters. Golden eagles are taken from the Iris and thus become accustomed to man. The hunting grounds of these birds of prey are large and ideal. The prey of the golden eagle is rabbit, fox, various birds and marmot, as well as larger animals such as wolves. Hunting with eagles is both common and traditional. Each October, before the hunting season begins, a popular eagle hunting festival takes place in Bayan Ogli. The birds with which the Kazakhs hunt are golden eagles that have a wingspan of more than two meters. The birds give their all during the hunt and are rewarded accordingly. The spacious landscape is the ideal hunting ground for the up to 7 kilogram females. Aged 7 to 8 years and before they reach sexual maturity, the eagles are released. From then, they hunt for themselves. The eagle wears a leather cap on its head that helps to keep it calm. It's removed a short time before the hunt commences.
the ever alert birds see everything. But today the hunt is interrupted. Both men disappear in the distance. Mongolia, land of nomads, wonderful wilderness, unspoiled landscapes, centuries old traditions, as well as fascinating cultural treasures and sanctuaries. All this is to be found in this legendary realm in the heart of Central Asia, along with its inhabitants who've retained their original way of life right up to the present day. <laughs>